If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be all about book recommendations that have a good first sentence. I'm a sucker for a book that just grips me from the get go. I know we all know some really classic ones like it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife or even happy families are all alike. Every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. There's obviously a good reason for these quotes to be this famous. I have actually done a video like this in the past, so I will be linking that down below, but let's go through the books because most of them I have read and want to recommend, and then a couple that I'm just excited to eventually read because they have such a good first sentence. I try to have a mix of different genres, so there's something for everyone here. If you are in the mood for witches, a very classic one would be Practical Magic by Alice Offman. For more than 200 years, the Owens women have been blamed for everything that has gone wrong in town. It definitely starts with the witchy vibes for me, I did actually enjoy the physical book. To be honest, I kind of prefer the movie, which kind of defies the purpose of this video, but I still think it really starts on the good note of a very realistic kind of witchy uh, book. If you haven't read it, I haven't watched the movie, definitely would recommend it. I have read the uh, prequel to it, which was also good, and there's another one that just came out, which I do want to check out uh, Magic Lessons, I believe. I'm always on the hunt for more uh, witchy books, so if you have any recommendations, please let me know. But yes, if you were in the mood for a classic witch book, you need to read this one. I read it not too long ago, so I do feel like some of the things are a little dated. Uh, that probably would not be published nowadays, but overall a good read. I will continue to recommend this sci-fi book to everyone if you are in the mood for something a little lighter and funny. It's very, very short. It's a novella. This is All Systems Read by Martha Wells, which is the first book in the Murderbot Diaries series. There are five books published so far, and there's a sixth one coming out uh, this year, so... Definitely a lot to catch up to. I could have become a mass murderer after I hacked my governor module, but then I realized I could access the combined feed of entertainment channels carried on the company satellite. You're following what is essentially a sentient robot who doesn't really like humans very much. And you can see they could have went ahead and killed everyone, but instead they just love watching TV. <laughs> I feel like it just sets the tone for the whole series so far. I've read the first three books, I'm planning on continuing, but yes, if you still haven't picked it up, definitely recommend you do so if you're in the mood, like I was saying, for something a little lighter because I thought it was really funny. The first book so far is my favorite of the three. Let's go with something a bit more serious. Kindred. Wow, I recently, very recently, finished this book and it will stay with me for absolutely ever. Let's start with the first sentence to give you an idea. I lost an arm on my last trip home. I also think that totally sets the tone for the book. The author tends to mix sci-fi and uh, slavery as themes for books. And in this one, you're following this young woman who is sent back 150 years ago to try and save this young man. And she goes back a couple times. I'm gonna keep it vague because it's fairly short. It's like 260 pages. And she doesn't really know why, at least in the beginning. And she obviously have to live with the consequences of, of being stuck in the 1800 as a black woman. And the contrast of the present time where she's still dealing with some racism, but then also in the past being literally a slave, it is absolutely gut-wrenching. Um, the author is incredible at making you feel for the characters, whether it's the main character, the side ones, and even like the bad ones. I don't really feel bad for them, but I mean like the author definitely portrayed well how the main character was feeling torn about some of them. And it was a very, very difficult read, but at the same time, you just can't put it down. I can't recommend this book enough if you are in the mood for something a little bit more serious. I need to read everything I own by the author, which actually I think I own technically like eight books by her, but I do have like two that are combined edition of like a whole series. So I will be binge reading them hopefully this year, but yes, if you still have yet to read something by Octavia E. Butler, highly recommend you do so. Probably should start with this one since it's a standalone, but yes, I adored it, hated it all in one and definitely do recommend it. And yes, it starts with her losing an arm. Let's go with something a little bit lighter next, shall we? Um, This book. The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. I've been meaning to read more by the author, but when I started watching booktube, this was everywhere. This is a YA fantasy. I ended up enjoying it more than I expected, and I know it's a really popular one for a lot of people. Let me start with the first sentence before I 
get sidetracked by the plot. Today was the day a thousand dreams would die and a single dream would be born. So you're following this princess who is forced to get married to a prince from a distant kingdom to try and keep things uh, at peace. And then on the day of the wedding, she escapes and two men go after her. The prince she was supposed to marry and then an assassin sent to kill her. And the twist is that you don't know who is who. So throughout the book, you know, everything happens and then you get the answer towards the end. But yes, I thought it was fun if you're on the mood for something that is quick, a little lighter, more fun and a little romancy. I'm not big on romance, but that's like where I draw the line. This works for me. And yes, definitely would recommend uh, this trilogy by her. I have the whole trilogy on my shelves. They're fun and I do feel like book one is fairly short-ish and then it gets bigger and more complex as you go through the series. The world just expands and it becomes more uh, like political intrigue than just a romance. I'm refilming this part because my camera was obviously focusing on Emily. The next book is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, which is one of my favorite books of last year. It begins with 19 years before she decided to die, Nora Seed sat in the warmth of the small library at Azaldine School in the town of Bedford. As you can guess, the main character ends up attempting suicide, so obviously some trigger warning for depression and suicide in this book. I do think it's well done though because the author does suffer himself from depression. It's a recurring theme in his books and uh when she ends up between life and death, she goes to this midnight library where every book in there is a different life she could be living right now if she had made different choices. So she gets to try on a few different ones and kind of experiment and see uh, if her life regrets her for no reason, if she has been living a life for herself or the people. And I do think it's almost impossible to put down. I personally really enjoyed it. I got nervous towards the end. <laughs> no spoilers, but I got nervous. But the ending was fine, so we're okay. Um, definitely a book I would recommend. I feel like a lot of people have been mentioning it. And the author in general tends to write standalone, so they're usually just one and done. Definitely do recommend this book. I need to stop talking about it because I can't. Something a little bit different, um, Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinball. <laughs> This is actually a Netflix TV show that just came out. I watched the first episode. I need to continue. This is so not my usual cup of tea, but I wanted to add something that, you know, is a little different from everything else I've been talking about. So it begins with pinch myself and say I'm awake once an hour. Which might sound a little weird, but it makes a lot of sense with the rest of the book. So I do recommend this book if you are in the mood for a thriller with kind of a, I always say sci-fi twist, but you'll see whenever you read it uh, or you can watch a tv show i really am excited to compare the two of them you're following this main character she's a single mom who um ends up going out one night for once and kisses a man who ends up becoming her newer boss and um she ends up becoming friends with his wife things get messy Let, let's just say that again usually not my cup of tea but it just worked for me people either love it or hate it Let's just say it. The ending is way out there and I went into it with a really open mind and ended up enjoying it. So something different. I also wanted to include a nonfiction I really enjoyed. This is So You've Been Publicly Shamed by John Ronson, which begins with... This story begins in early January 2012 when I noticed that another John Ronson had started posting on Twitter. The author decides to interview people who were publicly shamed. Either they tweeted something that they shouldn't have and then had to suffer the consequences. And he explores how different the public reacts to them if they are a man, a woman, for example. And depending on how they reacted, if they apologize right away or if they just, you know, double down. And I think it's really interesting. The book was published in 2015, so it's been six years, which with social media makes it kind of old. Hopefully the author actually is thinking about maybe releasing a part two. I feel like that would be fun to explore. There's a lot more examples nowadays, but definitely something to check out if that's something you are interested in. I really, really enjoyed it. Actually, do recommend the audiobook because the author is the one narrating it. And he's just awkward, but like in the most wholesome way possible. So definitely would recommend checking out that book. The next three books are books I have not read yet, but the first sentences definitely make me want to pick them up. So the first one is Space Opera, which have you seen this cover? This is a sci-fi and it's pretty much all I know. But the first sentence though, it's kind of long, but once upon a time on a small watery excitable planet called Earth in a small watery excitable country called Italy, a soft-spoken, rather nice-looking gentleman by the name of Enrico Fermi was born into a family so overprotective that he felt compelled to invent the atomic bomb. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that 
that totally piqued my interest. Like, I need to read this ASAP. Um, it's a fairly short one. It's about like less than 300 pages. It's been on my shelf for a little while, but with that first sentence, I know I will eventually pick it up. Something a little bit more serious, The Nightingale, which is an historical fiction, adult historical fiction book. I have a complicated relationship with World War II stories, but this one follows two sisters and it starts with, if I have learned anything in this long life of mine, it is this. In love, we find out who we want to be. In war, we find out who we are. Which sounds very appealing to me. I feel like I definitely want to read this book. Once I'm in the mood for this type of books, I will pick it up, but it's very popular in general. So definitely would recommend if you are someone that enjoys historical fiction. And last but not least, um, <laughs> this is Nugging which I picked up this book randomly at a library sale, I think, and it was a mix of the cover, which it's a Ken Barbie doll head on a G.I. Joe's body, which... <laughs> so obviously this caught my eye, the color, the weird cover, and then the first sentence made me just buy it. Listen, I was alive once and then I wasn't. Which sounds like such a good why, I think it's a contemporary <laughs> first sentence to have, Pique my interest, definitely need to, to pick it up. It is fairly sh short, it's like 300 pages, so it shouldn't be too long of a read because once again, why it tends to have pretty big writing. It has been on my like rainbow shelf that I haven't read for a while and eventually I will pick it up because I'm really curious. I mean, it has won some awards, but, oh, never mind, finalist, but still, I'm curious, we'll pick it up because that's the first sentence though. So that's gonna be it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out and please let me know in the comment section. Some really fun, is it doing it again? No, <laughs> got nervous. Uh, some first sentences in books that you love that are more underrated that not everyone knows because I wanna know if that uh, might me want to pick them up. <laughs> I'll see you in my next video, bye.